I actually didn't uh, grow up a Catholic. I uh, was raised uh, in a Christian home, and for the most part, we went to a Methodist church. So in the eighth grade, I joined the Methodist confirmation class, and after a little bit of formation, was baptized in the spring of my eighth grade year. And it was after that uh, event or moment in my life that I then, visiting some Catholic family members, went to Mass for what I think was the first time, the first time I can remember going to Mass. And it was at that time that I realized there was something different about this, uh, something noticeable, something I couldn't forget when I left. And, and after a couple year of years of doing this research and really learning to pray and praying more often, developing a habit of prayer, I realized that I needed to become Catholic because it was the truth and it was something I couldn't deny any longer. So I became Catholic actually as a sophomore in high school. I entered seminary right after high school and I entered first at Holy Trinity Seminary at the University of Dallas. Um, it was a bit of an odd uh, kind of change. Uh, it's one thing to convert to the Catholic Church as a teenager and then uh, to immediately want to enter seminary is another um, kind of difficult leap for many people to make. Uh, for me, as I said, the parish became uh, kind of the focus of my life once I became Catholic. And I became so thankful for everything that I had received from the church, especially through the grace of the sacraments, that I wanted to share that with others, and there are many ways to do that. Uh, but I wanted to do it in a very particular way that only a priest can do, and that is through the grace of the sacraments through celebrating the Mass, through celebrating the Eucharist, through uh, hearing confessions, through offering the grace of the anointing of the sick, and teaching in a way that only a priest uh, can. Uh, and so when I realized that that's what I wanted to do and what I wanted to share with others, uh, the next logical step was to discern the priesthood and to consider what that means. The first thing that made me want to be a priest or to pursue this vocation was the desire to share the grace of God in the sacraments. Uh, the sacraments especially of Eucharist and confession. So I really look forward to celebrating those sacraments, celebrating the Mass, um, praying the Eucharistic prayer uh, has been something that I've looked forward to for many years, uh, really from the beginning of seminary. Uh, and I also look forward to the ministry of the confessional hearing confessions, offering whatever counsel I can, and uh, giving people the pardon uh, of Christ, the pardon which Christ gives to them by His grace. I'd have to say it was probably around the age of eight. Um, I would basically go to Mass with my parents, and I would see the, the priest up there on the altar at St. Jude's, and I would kind of have this feeling of maybe peace in a sort, uh, in a sense, that would kind of say, oh, maybe this might be something that I might want to do. But of course, at eight years old, I didn't quite know that. So, but at the same time, I also had a list of things I might want to do. And on the first was to be a teacher. The second was to be a police officer. The third was to be a chef. And the fourth was to be a priest. So I think from that point and throughout my life, I was able to discern through those and figure out where God was calling me to be. So in high school, I was helping teach a catechism classes I taught. Well, I helped teach first grade or second grade first communion and then fifth grade as well um, and as soon as I graduated high school I decided to go and get my basic set uh, uh, TCC so the southwest campus so I did about a semester and a half of basics and then I switched to criminal justice to kind of go through my list um, and after doing about a semester of criminal justice I found out that wasn't what I was called to do I was good at it, but I didn't enjoy it. So I switched to cooking and that's what I got for about a year and a half. I got my uh, uh, certificate. I didn't quite get my degree yet, but that's after three years of community college, I decided to enter seminary. One day, I think during my third year of community college, I had gone into my uh, pastor at my home parish and then he directed me to the parochial vicar who just so happens to be Father Antron, one of the priests that's gonna be at St. John's when I go there. Um, and he gave me the vocation director's number on a little post-it. And I had that post-it above my desk for about three months. So I was very frightened to actually call it. 
but through prayer and through con con conversing with friends of mine and with uh, my parents and with everybody around me, I was able to finally call that number and to overcome that with help from God as well as others. One that constantly comes to mind is that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now I'm not great at remembering scripture verses off cuff, but that one really impacts me because it kind of shows me that whatever I encounter in my ministry, whomever I encounter, I will be able to help them with help from God and relying on God fully with that. It, it was a leap for me because I didn't grow up Catholic. That was a, there was a lot uh, to, to cross to, to find that, but I grew up as with this idea of wanting to do service somehow. And I knew it was service, I just didn't know how it was gonna manifest itself. So to become a Catholic priest, nobody would have thought, <laughs> nobody would have thought that. So I think part of being an older vocation is just I had a little little longer to, to travel to, to find out what that was and to discern and to understand that that was God's voice calling me to do it. But uh, as a little guy, the little, little kid thought about doing service. So, and then the priesthood 10 years ago. When I th started to think I had a, a vocation, uh, and at the time I was just kind of calling it, I'm gonna go all in with God. Uh, that was, oh, 12 years ago, as I was coming into the church and I, I went with, Benedictine monks. I've been reading a lot about the church fathers and got kind of hooked on it and, and really, really thought that that was going to be my vocation. And it, it was so close. I say it was like a, an oval trying to fit in a square, uh, in a circle. It was just really close. And, but I think uh, diocesan life was a better fit and it, it, uh, but I, but I knew that I was all in. I knew that something was happening, you know, something was happening in my life and that I, I had been working in Washington, D.C. and knew, knew I didn't want to continue that. I was uh, doing development work, uh, raising money for a lobby in Washington. And that was, you know, you know for some people that's just an absolute dream job, but it, it wasn't doing service. So there was something, something missing to the work, and it, it, uh, anyway, you know, I, I just sort of assumed I would be getting married. That seemed to be the natural progression, but uh, God was calling, and He had to knock a little louder and a little clearer, and eventually, kind of, okay, this is what, this is what He wants from me. I think you go through seminary and you learn a lot and you get formed and you change. There's this idea of kind of always, at least for me, on my mind, the people are out there and you just can't wait to get to know them. You can't wait to get to see them and, and you're in the classroom. <laughs> and it has to happen. It has to happen that way. Being able to see those people, the ones that I'm here to serve, uh, for the priest, your role makes no sense without the people to serve. So you get really excited, I did, to get to be around them. And like you said, I guess to, to now be able to serve them as a priest. And uh, it, it's just, it's awesome. I mean, it's like the height of what you're hoping to do. And I can't, I can't wait for it.